Hello, my name is Matt Gracie and I'm an engineer on the professional services team at Security Onion Solutions. This video is about tuning the rules for the Suricata Network IDS component of Security Onion to make them more applicable to your environment. This will reduce the number of false positives that your analysts have to investigate as well as the alert fatigue that comes with that process. Alert fatigue, if you're unfamiliar with the term, is the cognitive load that comes with evaluating a large number of alerts most of which turn out to be irrelevant or non-actionable. It's a recipe for burning out your analysts. And perhaps worse, it makes it more likely that when a genuine alert comes through, it will be dismissed out of hand. We're going to look at a sample alert and talk about ways of tuning it, from disabling the rule entirely, to setting a threshold to only alert on an unusual number of events, so your analysts aren't constantly trying to sort out the chaff from the alerts queue. Before we begin, I just want to emphasize that this tuning process is heavily dependent upon your particular environment. What sort of traffic you expect, what assets you have, what your threat model is, and so on. There's no silver bullet or magical command that will immediately customize the rule set to your circumstances. Rather, it's an iterative process where you'll be making adjustments regularly in order to accommodate changes in your network as well as in the threat landscape. As they say, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Okay, let's get started. The first step in tuning our Suricata rules is looking at the alerts queue to see which ones are actually firing. To do this, log into the Security Onion console, or SOC, and click on the alerts link on the left hand side of the screen. It's the one with the bell icon here near the top. When you click on that, you'll open up the alerts console, which will show you the alerts that have fired in your environment. In this case, over the last 24 hours, only one rule has fired for yum user agent outbound. We can see that it's fired three times. It's from Suricata, so it's a rule that we can tune, and it's flagged as high severity. The reason for that is that this indicates there's a Linux endpoint on your network that's reaching out for updates. If you primarily run Windows hosts on your network, this might mean that somebody brought in a computer from home or plugged in some sort of appliance or embedded device that's CentOS based and is looking for updates. So, it may be an unknown or unsanctioned endpoint on your network that merits investigation. If your environment is heavily Linux focused, this may be completely innocuous. This may be expected traffic and a rule that we can tune out. To get the information we need for tuning, let's click on the rule name, then click drill down. This will show us the individual alerts. We'll open up the top one. Inside the alert, the first thing to check is this network data decoded field. This will show you the actual network data that caused the alert to fire. So we can verify that this is a true positive. That is the detection in the rule did detect what it thought it did. In this case, we see a user agent for an HTTP session of yum 3.4.3. And it's going to mirrorlist.centos.org. So this is definitely a CentOS based host reaching out for updates. Now that we know that, we can make the determination of how we want to tune this rule. We already know that it's fired three times in the last 24 hours, so that may be information that we can use to set up a rule threshold. We can also get the source IP, in this case 192.168.1.5, the rule UUID, which is the identifier for the rule that we'll need for tuning it, in this case that's 2013505, and we can also get the destination IP is 67.219.148.138. The reason the source and destination IPs are helpful is that we can tune rules specifically for those fields. So for example, if you have a YUM repository that is sanctioned for use from your network, you can ignore that traffic with this rule, but instead alert only when somebody uses an unsanctioned or third party uh, repository. Similarly, if you have a section of your network where all of the Linux boxes are, a particular server subnet for example, you can ignore yum update traffic from those but still get alerted when something elsewhere on your network reaches out for the updates. And we'll walk through those scenarios shortly. Now that we have this information, how often the rule fires, what the source and destination are, and what the rule UUID is, we can take those to our manager and start tuning the rule. So I've opened an SSH session to my Security Onion environment so that we can start tuning this yum user agent rule. Now, for purposes of this demonstration video, I'm running Security Onion on a standalone server, 
Uh, but the process of rule tuning is the same in a distributed environment. You just make these changes on the manager, and then as the forward nodes check in for rule updates, they would receive the, the newly tuned rules for their Suricata instances and start using them to evaluate traffic. So the rules for Suricata are stored in opt so rules nids and they're in a file called all.rules. So if we just look at the top of that, we'll see this is all of our Suricata rules. A installation of Suricata and Security Onion has about 30,000 rules in uh, ET Open. I believe there's a few more in ET Pro. So there's an awful lot of stuff here that can be tuned and configured for your environment. If you want to look for our particular rule, we can grab for that rule.uuid or as Suricata calls it, SID for signature ID. That was 201-3505 in all dot rules. And we'll see it's right here. Uh, ET policy, GNU Linux, YUM user agent outbound, likely related to package management. And the SID is highlighted there, 201-3505. If we want to disable this rule entirely for our environment, we have a command line tool for doing that. It's called SO rule. So we would run sudo so rule disabled because we're changing the list of rules that are disabled. Add because we want to add this SID to the disabled list. 2013505. It's a sudo command, so it will require a password for elevation. And then it says your configuration is updated. Would you like to apply your changes now? We say yes. And it goes through, syncs those configuration files, uh, rebuilds all dot rules, and then that rule will be commented out. So once this process finishes, if we grep again, we'll see that there's a hash mark at the beginning of this, of this line. It's been commented out, so this rule will no longer fire if it sees a yum user agent. Again, this is a environment-wide change. So if you're working in a shop where there are a lot of Linux boxes and they're using yum and this is all expected traffic, that's great. You probably don't want that raising an alert for your analyst to deal with. It's just going to burn them out. So we can turn that rule off entirely. Another interesting capability of SO rule is that it can take a regular expression rather than a specific SID and disable multiple rules at once. So in many environments, uh, they get a lot of alerts for stun for uh, SIP applications attempting to establish a point-to-point -point tunnel. There are a fair number of rules for that in all dot rules. As you can see, these are all session traversal utilities for people trying to use SIP across a network where the endpoints are netted. If we want, we can disable all of those at once with sudo so rule disabled add open quote re for regular expression stun close quote would you like to apply your changes now yes it'll apply the changes it'll sync the configuration file and it will use that regular expression to match stun in caps across all the rules and any of them that match will be disabled so if we grep again we'll see that all of those stun rules are now disabled. They all have those hash marks at the beginning of the line. So this is a very powerful tool. If there is a class of rules or a particular um, architecture that just doesn't exist on your network and you don't need the alerts about it, you can craft these regular expressions to disable multiple rules at once. It's a real time saver. Now, if we need to get more granular and we need to... Uh, sort the traffic by source or destination, we can do that as well. But it's a bit beyond the capability of SO rule, so we're going to have to go in and modify the, uh, the salt pillar files in order to do that. So let's take a look at that next. In order to do more fine grain tuning of these rules, we need to edit the global.sls pillar file in our security onion installation. So to do that, I've elevated to root. I'm going to change to opt SO salt stack local pillar. You see there I've got the global.sls file. So we want to open that up for editing and go to the end. 
So we need to start a new configuration stanza here. It's called thresholding, so we'll start there. Remember, this is a YAML file, so indentation is very important. You need exactly two spaces for each level of indentation and no tabs. So we'll start with thresholding. On the next line, we put SIDS because we are thresholding based on specific signature IDs. After that, four spaces. Then we need our SID number. In this case, it's that YUM rule. So 2013505, colon, enter. Now we are suppressing. So suppress. And then gen ID or generator ID. This is almost always one, but if the rule that you're suppressing has a GID directive in it that is a different number, use that number instead. Track, which is how we're going to track our connections. In this case, we're going to track by source IP. And then IP, this is the IP that we want to allow list for this alert. So it's 192.168.1.5. Now, taken all together, what this configuration means is for signature number 2013505, suppress any alerts from source IP address 192.168.1.5. Uh, if you prefer, you can track by destination instead, or you can track by either. Uh, it'll track both directions. Uh, it's really up to you and your particular use case. If you would prefer, rather than doing an individual source address, you can also use CIDR notation to allow list an entire network. Something like that would be 192.168.1.0/24. That entire slash 24 network would not raise an alert for that YUM rule. So that is how uh, simple suppression works. Essentially, we're turning off alerts for that particular rule for one IP address or network. Uh, if we want to get just a little bit more fine-grained, we can use a thresholding rule instead. So let's erase this stuff. Instead of a suppression, we're going to use a threshold. So dot threshold. And then once again, generator ID, that's one. Our type is a threshold rule. We're going to track, once again, by source. Now we have a couple of new directives. We have count, which is 10, and seconds, which is 3600. And what this is saying is there's a certain amount of sort of background alerting that I expect but if it goes beyond a particular expected threshold, if it's anomalous behavior, then I want to be alerted on it. In this case, if one source generates more than 10 alerts under this role in the course of 3,600 seconds, so if I see YUM activity more than 10 times in an hour, uh, something anomalous is going on, and I really would like to receive an alert for that. Uh, keep in mind that the counter resets after the alarm is raised. So if an alert goes off uh, after 10 times, it will be silenced again for the next time and go off at 20 and so on. So this threshold needs to be exceeded each time in order for the alert to be fired. If that's what we want to do, then we can save our rules here. And now to put them into action, we need to restart the Suricarta process. So so dash suricata dash restart we'll see that'll read in the changes that we've made to our global.sls and put them into action so any thresholding or suppression rules that we've added to our global.sls configuration will now be put into effect in suricata this is a standalone instance so i only need to do it on the local machine uh, if i'm running a distributed installation of security onion I can make those changes using salt, or I can just wait for the Suricata instances on my forward nodes to check in, and they'll update themselves when they realize the configuration has changed. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you found this video useful. If you'd like more information on tuning Suricata rules, you can find that in our documentation. That's at securityonion.net slash docs. 
Uh, if you're interested in our training offerings where we dig deeper into topics like that, uh, more information on that is available at securityonion.net slash training. And finally, if you're trying to implement this in your own environment and you're running into issues, feel free to start a new thread at securityonion.net discuss and someone can help you out. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.